analyze some data from our lab six with our mixed acid sample. So this lab was kind of fun. You have some sodium hydroxide. Uh, I had a 0.2 molar concentration. That's what it says on the bottle. And then you had um, some solid weak acid, a mixture of weak acids. Uh, and you're going to weigh out that sample. And then you're going to dissolve it in 25 mils of water. So that's where I, I weighed out my samples. Um, I dissolved each of my samples in 25 mils of water. Then I filled up my syringe to the 20 mil mark. And then I did, uh, I did the titration. So I, I, I emptied the syringe, not completely, um, slowly titrated the sample until I saw that there was a pink color and it, and it stayed around. I had that permanent pink. Um, it was a pretty light pink. And then I just read the, the final volume. So that's all the data you have to collect. You have to get your masses. Uh, if you're using 25 mils, as it's recommended, um, of water to dissolve your sample. And that's to, to kind of, we pick 25 mils. It's like to simulate um, what a, you know, a, if you were to measure a sample of wine and you use 25 mils of the wine, something like that, a 25 mil aliquot. And uh, then you have your initial volume, your final volume. So to find the actual volume, you're just going to take the differences between these two, right? So I initially have 20 mils in my uh, syringe, and then I am measuring how much is coming out, and I have 7.5 uh, mils left over. So I'm going to do 20 minus 7.5 gives me 12.5. And I'm going to do the same thing for these other samples. And then I'm going to find uh, the moles. So what do I know? I know the molarity and I know the volume so I can find the moles. Remember molarity is moles over liters. So moles, I'm just going to multiply molarity times liters to give me moles. So my, my volume here is in milliliters. I'm going to convert that to liters first. So I'm going to take my 12.5, divide that by 1,000 right, to get to my um, liters, and then I'm going to multiply that by the 0.2, 0 0.2 molar, uh, and that should give me my moles. So I got 0 0.0025 moles. Awesome. So that's how many moles of sodium hydroxide I used up. Now for this next part, um, I'm going to use some stoichiometry. Remember stoichiometry from way back when in Chem 1? We're comparing how many moles of you know, sodium hydroxide am I using up and how many, I'm trying to go to grams. So when we were in Chem 1, we usually started with grams and we did grams to moles, moles to moles, moles to grams, right? We had a molar mass sandwich. Um, here, instead of doing grams to moles, I have um, a molar concentration and a volume. So I can use that to start with my moles. So that's going to be my starting point down here in my stoichiometric equation. And then this one to two comes from the uh, the equation, the, the reaction that's happening here. So I have one mole of my tartaric acid reacting with two moles of the sodium hydroxide. So that's why I have a one to two uh, ratio there. So that's where that one and two come from. So I start with my moles, divide by two moles to get me to convert to moles of tartaric acid. And then if I know moles, I can get to grams if I know the molar mass. So the molar mass of tartaric acid is 150 uh, grams, grams per mole. So one mole is that many grams. So this is just a molar mass over here. This is a mole to mole equation using the chemical, using the, the chemical equation. And then here we have the moles that we're starting with. So I'm going to take those 0 0.0025. That's what I'm starting with, the moles that I had there. I'm going to multiply that by 150 and divide by 2. And when I do that, I get 0 0.18. 75 grams of tartaric acid. Okay, and now I can measure, uh, I can calculate the titratable acidity, and there's a lot of equations to do that. There's so many ways to represent titratable acidity. So we're going to show you two different ways here. Uh, we'll look at titrat um, titratable acidity in terms of grams of tartaric acid, which I just calculated over here, per 100 mil sample, um, and we usually refer to that as titratable acidity, and this is the equation there. So just a little idea, <laughs> just you know, where did that come from? Why is there this random 100 mils and what's going on? I'm setting up a proportion. Um, I'm going to say grams of my tartaric acid over my uh, 25 mil sample, right? That's what I have in, in here. But if I want to know how much, how many grams would I have out of a 100 mil sample, I just set up this little proportion. So I multiply both sides by 100, multiply by 100. And so I'm going to take the grams that I just had, multiply that by 100, and divide by 25 because that was my sample. So that's all we're doing here. Um, so we're going to take our 0 0.1875 and multiplying by, multiplying by 100 and dividing by 25. Uh, and that should give you, right, sample times 100 divided by 25, 0 
um, so or 0.75 percent and uh, you're going to need that for when you look at the post lab questions. So down here, the post lab questions are asking, um, you know, most things are, most table wines are in the range of 0.6 to 0.9. You know, how does this one fare? Is it is it in the right range? And so 0.75 um, would be in the right range here. Of course, you're going to do this for your other two trials and then take an average. So that's what this next line is. So after I, I do the same set of calculations for trial two and trial three, I'm just going to add up those three numbers divided by three, and that's going to be my average titratable acidity, and that's what I'm going to compare in the post-lab questions. Another way to think about titratable acidity is in the grams of your tartaric acid sample, um, grams of tartaric acid divided by the grams of the sample, and that's literally all you have to do, just take those grams, the 0 0.1875, and divide that by the mass of your sample, the 0 0.13, 0 0.13, and when I did that, I got 1.44. And then to find the average, you do the same calculations for trial two and three, add those three up and divide by three, and then there you go.